of Jimmy Nolan and if you've been watching my channel for any length of time you probably noticed I focus a lot on lesser known and obscure bands and guitarists, albums, songs, and really Jimmy Nolan is the epitome of the unsung guitar hero. Now just in case you don't have a clue who Jimmy Nolan was and his importance in music, Jimmy Nolan played uh, with James Brown. He was literally the father of funk guitar. He created you know the scratchy chicken scratch you know, sound that people think of when they think of funk. And he joined forces with James Brown somewhere around the mid-60s, like around 1964. Continued until around 1970, left the group for a couple years, and then came back. And continued to play with James Brown until Jimmy Nolan passed away in 83. But he really is you know, like this you know, unsung hero of funk guitar. So if you like funk or funk rock, you know, whether it's you know, Funkadelic or it could be the Chili Peppers or Corey Wong and you know, Wolfpack and some of these groups that have come out in recent years, Definitely funk is really exciting. It's this rhythmically dynamic and, uh, you know, really infectious, you know, style of music. I love funk music and funk rock, but uh, this lesson's going to dive deep into, you know, Jimmy Nolan's chord style and some riffs and some songs, and you're going to come away with a better understanding of funk guitar. So in James Brown's music, I mean, he actually had other guitarists. There were two other guitarists before Jimmy Nolan and a handful after Jimmy Nolan. And when you're digging around in James Brown's music, you have to make sure you're listening to the right era or you might be listening to somebody else. You know, like the famous, you know, song Sex Machine, that's not Jimmy Nolan. Um, and then when you start digging around like in the early years, you know, back when James Brown was more of a crooner and he was singing ballads and stuff, that's also not Jimmy Nolan. So there's this window of time when he joined forces with James Brown, literally, you know, hit some ninth chords and some scratchy, you know, rhythms and changed the face of, of music, really. He helped create, you know, funk music. Also, if you want to dive a little deeper into funk guitar, um, I did have a lesson. It was the January 2020 issue of Guitar Player Magazine, and I did a lesson for Corey Wong. And even though that's not really a Jimmy Nolan, you know, lesson, it's a Corey Wong lesson, Corey's definitely influenced by Jimmy Nolan and Prince and a whole bunch of different, you know, funk guitarists. But you can definitely catch some more, you know, funk guitar action in that lesson. The opening, that's Willie and the Hand Jive by Johnny Otis. And that actually appears in the 50s Guitar Chords episode of Chord Play I put together. But that's Jimmy Nolan on guitar, so I wanted to include that again. And there's actually two guitars in the opening and during the song. And you can hear Juan's just playing the Bo Diddley beat, you know, endlessly like this. the song with this. So it's basically B flat minor pentatonic and the chord we're actually using there for that Bo Diddley beat is a B flat major so he's kind of mixing minor pentatonic with that major sound but it's just a stock you know B flat major chord right there and that Bo Diddley riff is really just the bottom four strings down here. So he's not playing the full chord, you know, it's just the bottom part. And then Jimmy's basically playing out of the box here in B flat. He's kind of doing that bend and release on that E flat and then grabs D flat and kind of smears it. And then you hear the other guitar. And you hear it again. Then he starts doing this. Grabbing that E flat, bending up a whole step, grab B flat over on the high E string, then bend and release that E flat, grab that D flat and B flat right there. And then you're gonna 
basically do so that's E flat bent up grab that B flat on the high E and then a little partial you know B flat major to another little partial B flat major double stops right there but that's a cool intro part for sure comes in the Bo Diddley riff continues B flat and then it moves to E flat eventually but that's not Jimmy Nolan Jimmy's actually sliding into this partial B flat on top you know and then the Bo Diddley riffs below it and then when it goes to E flat he does the same thing right here which is F, he does the same thing. Yeah, up next is Papa's Got a Brand New Bag, which was Jimmy Nolan's debut with James Brown. Very famous song. And it's going to sound a little empty because it's missing the bass and the horns and the drums. But it's something like this. with that big B7 right there, and that's kind of a signature Jimmy Nolan chord. So that definitely comes from jazz. Just think of a B7 bar chord, but you're gonna grab that A with your pinky there on the B string. And that's opening chord, you know, the horns and everybody's hitting right there. So it sounds huge. And then Jimmy Nolan's basically grabbing this. So it's an E9, but it's just the top part of it. And we're gonna talk about Jimmy Nolan's, you know, favorite chords in just a second. But that's really what he's playing right there, and it's just the stab kind of chord hit. So I'm using an upstroke there, almost like a reggae riff. You could do downstrokes too, because it is on the beat. Like that. But the trick right there is you want to fret the chord and strum it, and then immediately lift your fingers to you know, silence or dampen that chord. And mute it right there. So it's really short and sweet and really clean as far as the, the mute. So you want to do that eight times right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The next shape right here is A7. So you're just grabbing A, C sharp, and that G right there. You're going to play that four times the same way. back to that partial E9 uh, four times and then a B7 so take that A7 shape we had and move it up here and we're gonna do that twice then go back to A7 once and then you're gonna basically play that partial uh, E9 15 times so you're basically playing the and of one and then there's three groupings of sixteenths and then you're coming in again on the one so it's like one, two, a really relaxed wrist with that like this you don't want to tighten up because you don't want to stiff you know stiffen up your picking hand you want to strum it really loose and then go back to that big B7 chord again and then you loop all that again so like I said that song sounds empty without the horns and bass and drums but that's literally what Jimmy Nolan was playing and Papa's got a brand new bag before we go any further, let's dive into some of Jimmy Nolan's favorite chords because that's going to give you a heads up and kind of a clue as far as, you know, what he's playing and why he's playing it. So a lot of people consider ninth chords the funk chord, right? And you can hear this in jazz and a lot of other styles too. It's not just a funk thing, but there are a lot of ninths uh, in funk music thanks to Jimmy Nolan. And so this is going to be an E9 right there, a big six string, you know, voicing. <laughs> very funky you know sound but Jimmy Nolan rarely ever played the giant E9 like that 
the people influenced by Jimmy Nolan after him, like in the 70s when funk really blew up, they were the players that were playing those huge, you know, ninth chords. Think of Average White Band and Earth, Wind and & Fire and some of that stuff, Isaac Brothers. But Jimmy Nolan always scaled his chords down. And that's one thing in funk music you're going to learn about because you have to remember the bass guitar is the one that's active. Usually the bass, like Bootsy Collins or whoever's playing, is moving and grooving and melodic and it's almost like a solo. And then the drums, you know, are maintaining the rhythm and the, and the beat, of course. You got the horns that are occasionally, you know, playing melodies or like these horn hits and stuff. And the guitar is a rhythm, you know, instrument in funk. It's not a showcase, you know, uh, center stage kind of uh, instrument in funk. It's a supporting instrument. So it's a lot of rhythm, it's a lot of scratching, a lot of chord hits, a lot of space. You know, it's not soloing and shredding and filling up, you know, all the space. It's really tight and concise. And it's, it's like pieces of a puzzle, you know, when you put the bass and the drums and the horns and the guitar together and you hear this wall of sound, which is funk. But anyway, with that ninth chord, typically Jimmy, you know, never really did this that often. It was more like what we had in, in uh, Papa's Got a Brand New Bag, that partial uh, E9. And then sometimes he would just play the top part. He wouldn't even grab, you know, that G sharp. He just grabbed this. varieties, you know, the giant full version, which he didn't really use, and then these scaled down kind of smaller versions, right? You know, so there's E9 right there, and it's a bar chord, so you can move that around. There's D9, you go down a whole step, go down another whole step, there's C9, right? And you can move up too, like there's E, there's F sharp, G sharp, you, know, you can play these chords everywhere. But then remember, you know, when you start moving those around, look for those scaled down, kind of smaller, you know, abbreviated chords, I guess, or partial chords. Now, in Papa's I uh, got a brand new bag, we also saw this A7, and he definitely liked using that shape a lot, too. And he also used it for B. And you can think of that big chord that we had in Papa's got a brand new bag, but you're just scaling that down to this third and the flat seven right there. The same thing for A right there. There's the root, the third, and the flat seven. Now if we continue here, uh, Jimmy definitely had some really cool tricks up his sleeve. So think of, you know, E major right here. And if he was going to play E7, he might do it this way. Which is really crafty. You know, there's E, and then the seven is that D note you're grabbing on the high E string. A, and there's B, 7, and then that E7. As far as Jimmy's famous chicken scratch, that's really just muting the strings and you're creating this percussive, you know, rhythmic effect. You know, it's just a percussive noise. It's not really even a chord or a note or anything. It's just noise. That scratchy chicken scratch sound. And you can find this in a lot of songs, you know, from James Brown, but definitely that scratchy chicken scratch, you know, sound influenced everybody. And then everybody started adding that to their music. But next is Cold Sweat Part 1. And this is going to demonstrate a few of the chords we just looked at. It also contains a single note riff from Jimmy and some of the chicken scratch too, some of that muted strumming. But it's something like this. <laughs>
changes. Like this is the famous James Brown, you know, take it to the bridge. And historically in James Brown music, um, you know, whenever he would go to the bridge, that's when Jimmy would n normally like just jump into action right there. And he would change his riff, maybe start, you know, scratching or sliding or doing something different. So he does the single note riff forever. <laughs> Eventually when it changes, you're going to hear this. And right there he's literally just grabbing this little partial C7. So it's like that E7 that I showed up here a moment ago, but um, or back here. Right, so it's C7. And then right there you can hear this partial chord slid. And that's kind of like an implied F9 right there. Right. So the chords are moving from C that F right there. And there's some really interesting things happening, you know, with the bass, which the guitar isn't doing it, the bass is. But during that part, you're hearing this. And then you hear the bass kind of walk up B flat, B to C. You know, super funky too. just very simple like I said you know Jimmy's just playing a part in there and it fits almost like a house of cards or a puzzle and it fits with what the bass is doing the horns are doing the drums are doing and as a team they're all pushing forward and of course James Brown's just wailing on top of it so the scratching part takes place after that partial chord slide because you hit this twice the C7 and then you're sliding that partial F9 to G9 and back and then you kind of hear There's a giant, you know, like moment where everybody's hitting at the same time, like this. And then, and then the big, and that's basically G9 way up there. And you can hear the horns and the bass and everybody, the drums are banging right at the same time right there during that part. And that partial G9. too i like it now you're going to experience some deja vu this is mother popcorn which is very similar to cold sweat just a little different some little twists and turns but something like this <laughs> sweat because that goes on forever and then finally when you take it to the bridge you know and it changes after that you know instead of doing that c7 like you did in, in cold sweat in mother popcorn he's actually going back to c9 so he's grabbing that and then do the same slide and you can actually hear the bass is doing the same thing like that b flat b to c walk up so it's interesting how they kind of just twist, you know, change the title, change some of the chords, change the groove ever so slightly, and they came up with a completely different song, Mother Popcorn. But uh, really interesting how it's just a variation of Cold Sweat, but that other part, you're just banging on that twice, and the same chord slide. And then some more scratches in there. part in there. The last example is from Papa Don't Take No Mess. This is a great James Brown song and we're kind of mixing it up a little bit with this part but something like this. So we're starting with that partial G9 right there. And there's an A octave right here. And then a D9 kind of partial chord. See, so hearing that real funky. And it kind of 
changes the rhythm on that D9 the second time. episode of chord play with the chords of Jimmy Nolan and as I mentioned earlier Jimmy Nolan literally created funk guitar he's the father of this and he kind of pushed that door open and showed the world what you can do with a handful of partial chords and this funky kind of percussive you know strumming and using kind of a clean you know guitar tone he rarely ever used you know I think later like in the 70s he started using some wah and stuff like that but he rarely ever did like you know fuzz guitar solos or anything like that it was more rhythm in these pocket grooves and just locking in with that rhythm section and a lot of those James Brown songs I mean Jimmy would play the same thing for like a minute and a half two minutes and then finally the song would change and he would do something else and then would go back to that first part and he would lock in and play it for another minute or two you know so he was like a machine almost like a robot and play the exact same part you know um, perfectly, you know, where he wouldn't deviate or mess up, you know, the rhythm or the groove. He would lock in, like I said, like a machine, and just, you know, until the end of the song, he just kept going and going and going. And that's really cool. You know, he wasn't shredding and doing crazy solos, but he was playing his instrument, you know, with an ensemble, and the sound they produced, you know, it's almost like an orchestra, like a funk orchestra. The drums, the bass, the horns, the guitar, you know, if you have keys or something, and then of course the vocals on top. And that's how a funk band works. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.